Hello. Um, can folks hear me? I'm just hearing like hold music. Okay, great. Um, can people hear me? A little bit of feedback would be great. Great, okay. Uh, I will dark then. Excellent, okay. Well, listen, um, this is a little weird because I can't see anyone and I don't hear anyone, but I'm gonna assume that, uh, that there are people on the other end of this screen. The, uh, my name is Mark Graham and um, I'm really happy to be with you all today virtually. Uh, I have enjoyed participating physically in uh, other Wikimania uh, conferences, and I, I'm really sorry that I'm not with you uh, in Singapore today. I will be uh, there next year. This is the annual Wikimania uh, update from the Internet Archive. Uh, I'm going to go over some material that those of you who have uh, been working with the Internet Archive for a while probably already know, but I guarantee you there will be some new material, and I will give an update on the court case uh, so first of all, the, the team, I just want to acknowledge that the uh, the, the core team, uh, we call ourselves Turn All References Blue or TARB, um, consists of some uh, faces that I'm sure many of, of you are familiar with, uh, Stephen Ballback, uh, Maximilian Dorr, Jake Orlitz, James Hare, and Dr. Sawood um, Alam. The, the, we call ourselves Turn All References Blue. We've got this kind of uh, general big idea. The big idea is that in the future, Everything's going to be connected. We'll just take it all for granted. Um, when one references any material whatsoever in any medium, uh, the all related and referenced material would be a be a gesture away, a click away. Uh, it's it'll just all be there, and uh, we won't even we won't think about it any longer. We'll take it for for granted. But but at this point, we're not we're not there yet, and so we have a lot of work to do. <clears throat> and the Internet Archive as a library. Um, has decided to take on uh, a piece of this task with a focus on Wikipedia um, in two major areas. Uh, <clears throat> one is dealing with links um, that have gone bad, and the other is with uh, links that can be made better. So uh, first off, link rot. <clears throat> when good URLs go bad, um, and this is basically the dreaded 404s. On the left, we see what one might get on the live web, uh, page not found. Whereas um, if you go to the Wayback Machine for that same URL, there's a really nice archive. Um, so uh, that is uh, what this work is about. The other uh, uh, area of, of work is around content drift, where what's available on a given URL and in a given point in time changes, uh, and such that at another point in time, it may be a radically or a subtly different uh, thing. In any case, this is where web archiving uh, comes in and where we effectively take snapshots of what's available on web pages at different uh, points in, in time. So the foundation of the work that we do with uh, the Wikipedia sites, it starts with uh, doing a really good job of archiving. First of all, the public web writ large, we archive more than a billion URLs uh, a day. But in particular, ensuring that we archive URLs that are referenced on Wikipedia articles across uh, all of the more than 320 Wikipedia language editions. And we, we do that by, by listening to uh, the Event Stream API. We've also listened to the Enterprise uh, API. We extract out uh, new URLs. And, um, and then we, we submit them uh, to our infrastructure to, to be archived uh, and, and to be made available via the Wayback Machine. And this is a recent view of URLs uh, broken down uh, by day that we have archived based on um, them showing up, uh, becoming available to us uh, through the, the event stream API. Uh, you'll see the you know, numbers of around, about a million a day there. But we don't stop there. Um, we we go to URLs that are referenced on the web pages associated with the seed URLs, the base URLs that we get. 
uh, let's say, for example, um, uh, the URL that we want to archive as a CNN article. Um, well, uh, in this case, we're looking at one particular CNN uh, page. So you start with one C page. And then that page has 333 embeds on it. Those are page requisites, page elements, uh, HTML, JavaScript, uh, uh, CSS, images, etc. So we have to get all of those other 388 URLs. And then on that page, in this case, there were 174 uh, other pages that were linked. And all of those pages have a collection of embedded uh, page objects. And so this is an illustration of where you can start with one URL. And then if you do a what's referred to as a one hop crawl or archive all of the embeds and all of the referenced uh, pages and all of the embeds on those pages, uh, the process turns into uh, 31,259 URLs. So it gives you an idea of the of how things scale um, pretty pretty quickly. You can imagine if you went for a, a one more hop out that these numbers would, would would grow fairly dramatically. So in addition to archiving the seed URLs that we get from the event stream API, we also um, archive outlinks from those URLs as well. So um, let's say, for example, we had archived uh, a page on, oh, I don't know, an anthropology report about some Mayan site or something. And then that page referenced a lot of other pages. Um, it'd be a shame if we only archived the base page. And then if a researcher wanted to go deeper, they go and click on, on an archived, uh, they go to get an archive of an outlink and they would get a page not found, that'd be very sad. So we work really hard to try to do a, a really good deep job of uh, being both uh, complete from a, a, a width perspective, as well as uh, going very deep uh, to get as much as we can. Uh, just, you know, as an illustration, uh, case in point, this is the, an archive of an interactive page from the 117th Congress of the United States dealing with uh, January 6th. The interesting thing about this is this January 6th um, page by the US Congress was probably one of the most watched pages on the web because um, many people uh, knew that when the 118th Congress came in, they would eliminate the committee um, associated with this uh, with this uh, series of web pages and they would uh, get rid of, of the website. And they did exactly that. Um, and there's a lot of archives of much of the site. But this particular page, which is an interactive timeline of what happened on January 6th, um, to the best of our knowledge, was only archived uh, by the Wayback Machine. And this is not available yet, even through the Library of Congress or other, other archives. So uh, it's just a you know, testament to the importance of being diligent and trying to get things um, uh, when they're published, because you never know. Uh, you, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And one of our models is if you see something, save something. So what do we do? We, uh, it, we, we start with, with making sure we're doing a good job of archiving what's published uh, through Wikimedia uh, Foundation, the, the related websites. And then we run software called Internet Archive Bot. Um, and today, Internet Archive Bot is run on 215 of the 334 language editions and also 58 additional uh, wikis. And what this software does, it runs through an individual uh, Wikipedia site. In some cases, it can do it in a day. In some cases, it takes a couple of months. It looks for broken links, uh, tests them three times over the course of uh, multiple days. So we don't get, we try to reduce the false positives. Then we go, we look. If we really think that the page has gone dead, um, then we try to find an archive from it in the Wayback Machine. And if we can find an archive, then we edit the page. Uh, so the uh, the first ta-da of this presentation is that I can announce that we have uh, now fixed more than 18 million formally broken links across 215 Wikipedia uh, languages. And furthermore, that 4 million of those were uh, fixed in the last year alone. So this is this is not the number of total um, links that have been fixed or the no number of total Wayback Machine links uh, in Wikipedia sites that those numbers would be much larger. These are the, the ones that our Internet Archive bot software have gone in and, and actually found were broken and were able to successfully uh, fix. So in addition to fixing broken links, we, as I noted, we also work to make uh, links better. 
uh, and and uh, and more useful. And one one way we do that is we uh, identify opportunities to uh, add links to things that are referenced, uh, specifically uh, books and and papers where um, there is no link to that referenced resource uh, yet, where there's not a link to Google Books or um, or another source for, for that particular resource. And, and we add links to those resources. So we, we, we work to turn book citations blue. And one of the ways we do that, um, I mean, similarly, how I said, you know, we, we, we archive much of the web uh, so that we can then um, Arc, uh, replace those archives with broken links. A few years ago, the Internet Archive bought uh, Better World Books, one of the world's largest uh, used bookstores, and we we donated it to one of our sister nonprofits. So it, technically, Better World Books is owned by a sister nonprofit of the Internet Archive, and we take books right off of the conveyor belts that uh, that have been uh, uh, referenced in Wikipedia articles, and we prioritize the digitization of those books so that we can uh, add links to them. So the second tada is that uh, I can announce that we have that there that there are more than 1.8 million links um, now across about 60 Wikipedia language editions pointing to books from archive.org. Uh, more than 1 million of those links were added by our software and uh, more than 800,000 were added by Wikipedia editors. In addition, our software has added more than 141,000 links to academic papers and articles across uh, about 60 Wikipedia language editions. It's a two-way street also. Um, you know, I just want to note here the importance of, of linking in general. This is a book that actually came out today um, on, on Kindle. It comes out next week uh, on paper, written by a, a, a China uh, scholar. It's called Sparks, and it's about the uh, China's underground historians and their battle for the future. I'm sure this book will be of great interest to many Wikipedians. And uh, there are 85 Wayback Machine links in this book. So this is where an author recognized uh, the importance of preservation and not just relying upon live, link, live web links uh, for the book. In fact, uh, the author just told me today that several of the links in this book have already gone bad, have already turned into 404. So um, it was uh, good of him to have used Wayback Machine links. A couple of things uh, that are coming up, one in the lab, uh, we call this Reference Explorer. It's an attempt to create kind of a Swiss army knife for references uh, uh, that appear on objects where the objects could be a Wikipedia article or a PDF or, um, or any given web page. This is uh, in, in development and I welcome uh, the opportunity to collaborate with others that are working in the space. We recently cataloged about, a, about 15 um, citation helper kind of like apps and have been evaluating them and we're interested in collaborating once again with other people who have worked on this ecosystem. What's coming up next? Uh, one is finding and fixing soft 404. So what we've done so far is focused on uh, hard 404s. That's when you get an HTTP status code of 404. A, a soft 404 is actually technically a status code 200. So it's basically a good page. From the web browser perspective, there's nothing wrong with the page whatsoever. But from a human being perspective, um, if, for example, as you can see in this example here, um, it's pretty obvious that um, this is not a good page. In fact, it may even say uh, error 404 on the page, but it's really, once again, a status code 200. So being able to reliably identify soft 404s and then uh, go look for replacement. Um, good 200s for them is something that we um, are developing software and capabilities for uh, as, as I speak. Okay, um, I've got eight minutes left here. And so about the publisher lawsuit, I'm sure some of you have questions about this. I'm gonna read from um, a blog post that we made available today. And, um, and the blog post actually has an image of a Wikipedia article, the Martin Luther King one right there. Uh, what the Hache uh, versus Internet Archive decision means for our library. Our library is still strong, growing, and serving millions of patrons. But the publisher's attack on basic library practices continue. Last Friday, 
So this is hot off the press. Last Friday, the Southern District of New York issued its final order in the Hache versus Internet Archive, thus bringing the lower court proceeding to a close. Um, so that, that this part is finished. We disagree with the court's decision and intend to appeal. In the meantime, however, we will abide by the court's injunction. The lawsuit only concerns our book lending program. That's, that's fairly key. This was a lawsuit about book uh, lending. Uh, the injunction clarifies that the plaintiffs, uh, publisher plaintiffs will notify us of their commercially available books and the interim archive will expeditiously remove them from lending. Additionally, the judge also signed an order in favor of the Internet Archive, agreeing with our request that the injunction only cover books available in electronic format and not the publisher's full catalog of books in print. Separately, we have come to an agreement with the Association of American Publishers, the trade organization that coordinated the original lawsuit uh, with the four publishers, that the AAP will not support further legal action against the Internet Archive for controlled digital lending, that's the lending of, of the books, if we follow the same takedown procedures for any AA uh, member publisher. So what is the impact of these final orders on our library? Broadly, this injunction will result in a significant loss of access to valuable knowledge for the public. It means that people who are not part of an elite institution or who do not live near a well-funded public library will lose access to books they cannot read otherwise. It is a sad day for the Internet Archive, our patrons, and for all libraries. Because this case was limited to our book lending program, the injunction does not significantly impact our other library services. The Internet Archive may still digitize books for, the preservation, for preservation purposes, and we may still provide access to our digital collections in a number of ways, including through interlibrary loan and by making accessible formats available to people with qualified print disabilities. We may continue to display short portions of books as is consistent with fair use. For example, Wikipedia references, and then we say as shown in the image above. This injunction does not affect lending of out of print books. And of course the Internet Archive will still make millions of public domain texts available to the public without restriction. Uh, so thanks to your continued support, our library is going strong, growing, and serving millions of patrons. Libraries are going to have to fight to be able to buy, preserve, and lend digital books outside of the confines of temporary licensed access. We deeply appreciate your continued support, and we will continue this fight. So that's the end of my remarks, and there's four minutes left here. And... Oh, I can see people now. This is great. I can see the back of people's heads. Woohoo. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I would give many of you hugs because I know many of you if I could see you there. At, uh, so thank you so much. From It's a really good to see you from, from, from Half Moon Bay, California. I don't know if I could take any questions. I'd be happy to if I can. But I also can't hear anything here, so sad. Thank you, that was great. Um, uh, it was interesting to hear you talk about the IA bot um, fixing broken links in an, and uh, rotten links in an automated way. I understand that a very large number of links have also been fixed manually by Wikipedians. Um, is that yeah. number in the millions as well? Yes, it is. Um, and I, I can come up with some number about that. We're doing some research. I don't have that number handy here. Um, and there's a number of additional uh, numbers that I um, uh, will try to share. But yes, it, I mean, this has been an ongoing uh, effort, right? Wikipedians have since the beginning uh, used uh, Wayback Machine URLs. We've also 
uh, in some cases gone in and proactively added Wayback Machine uh, URLs. We did that, for example, for the Ukrainian and the Russian Wikipedia sites when the war started uh, as part of many things that we did relative to, to the war um, and um, as a way to help strengthen the integrity of those sites because we recognize that probably a lot of the URLs would end up going bad. In fact, in the case of Ukraine, many of them have. Thank you. Just one last question, and then we'll move to the next session. Yeah. Uh, thank you. The um, Turn the Links Blue uh, uh, project looks fantastic. Um, is there scope to expand that or work with you? You know, if there's a database, or I'm particularly interested in like report literature and you know NGO reports and government reports and that sort of thing, which often don't have any links. Absolutely. Um, I just I mark at archive.org. I please do reach out to me. That's the, probably the most important thing I wanted to say. We, um, I personally and the team work to be responsive. Uh, when we when we expanded and, and scaled up to you know more than 150 language editions, we also scaled up our uh, efforts to support um, the uh, people that were posting um, you know uh, bug bug reports, etc. And so. Please, please do uh, email me, and I will work to um, to try to help meet whatever needs you might um, share. Thank you for turning around. I can see you. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.